The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our canticle of praise is angels from the realms of glory.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gift of food and livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlines far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and he has redeemed him with the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden. They shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young man and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I forgot to add the children's message into our bulletin today. So I invite all of you to join with me in this time of, of thinking about the, what, the gospel we are about to hear. And to do that, I'll invite you, to, if you just unmute yourself when you know the answer of where I am going, I'm gonna show you some things that I'm bringing along with me. And if you can guess, just unmute yourself and speak because I can't see everybody, unfortunately. But where do you think I'm going? This is one thing that I'm gonna be bringing. Oh, you can't, oh, here you go. You can see it sometimes, I think. Okay, there's one thing. And then I'm bringing this. Uh, let's see, it's a lantern, if you can't see it. And the third thing I am bringing are some stakes like can't that. Be. Camping, right, right. In a minute, we're going to hear in the Gospel of John, the, the Gospel writer named John wrote about how at Christmas, Jesus came to earth as a human being. And the way he talked about it is the word became flesh and lived among us. But actually, in the original language, it means pitched a tent with us. So I'd like to think like what the only time I usually pitch a tent is when I'm going camping. And so that's why I was thinking about camping a little bit this week. And what if we could think a little bit more today then about how God came right next to us. Now, if you've ever been camping in a tent, you know that the tents are pretty close together, right? And you can see what other people are doing outside of their tents. You can smell their cooking. You can almost taste what they're having, right? You can hear the conversations that people are having. What are we, 
about if we thought about how God is as close to us as the people in the next tent. <laughs> That's what we'll talk more about to a little bit later. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for coming to earth and pitching a tent among us. Help us to trust that you are with us always. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 10 through 18. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only son who is close to the father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And at that moment, we know as Christmas, God became human. There's a story of a boy who was afraid of the dark. He was convinced that there were monsters living under his bed and in the closet. And so night after night, at some point during the evening, he would run into his parents' room and hop into their bed. Tired of this, the father once said to the boy, you don't have to be afraid. God is here with you. And the boy answered, I was hoping for someone with skin. I imagine all of us at times have wished for someone with skin to be close to us. It may not be because we're afraid of monsters in the closet, but there are plenty of times when we lie awake in the dark for other reasons. God has promised to be with us always, and yet it would be nice to have someone with more skin. In these moments, we turn to John's Gospel. The word became flesh and lived among us, pitched his tent among us. Now, in the Old Testament, God traveled with the people of Israel in the tabernacle, in a tent called the Tent of Meeting. People would pick it up and carry this tent, this tabernacle, wherever they went. They understood that God's presence was located in it. In John's Gospel, he announces that God has chosen to live in a, with us in an even more radical way by the Word embodied in human flesh. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. You know, there's a lot of ways to communicate with each other these days. But some messages are still best delivered in person. A marriage proposal, for example. I've seen TikTok marriage proposals, and they don't look good. News of a death or tragedy, it's best delivered in person. COVID-19 has reminded us just how important physical presence is. Today, we are reminded that God understands physical presence. In Jesus, God decides to deliver the word in person, to come closer to us. Martin Luther once said that he was glad that God did not choose to come to earth as an angel, but as a human. 
that God did not choose a holy, heavenly being. But instead, God chose one of God's own creatures. God chose a creature who is prone to sin. God chose a human being who is by nature prone to fears and doubts, prone to suffer grief, loss, and disappointment, and also prone to express joy and love. God chose to put on skin rather than wings, and that choice was a gift to us. And yet, as we hear, precisely because God chose to come on earth as a baby and not as an angel, the gospel says the world did not know him. Did you catch the irony in those verses? God was in the world, the very world which came into being by God. And yet the world did not know who he was. God was in the world, walking and talking among the very people whom God created. And yet God's own people didn't recognize him. I grew up in Pittsfield, in the western part of the state. And in Pittsfield, there was really one department store. It was named England Brothers. It was the only department store, the only place that you really went shopping on North Street there. It was the place in town to buy a dress for the prom, school clothes, scout uniforms, a gift for a friend, greeting cards. It was also the place that I remember most fondly as the fourth floor, where there was Robert the Talking Reindeer, who would answer questions before you got in line to see Santa Claus. When people were going downtown in Pittsfield, England Brothers was usually a stop that they were going to make that time. Well, I think I was about five years old, and I was in England Brothers with my grandmother. And we were standing at the candy counter waiting for my mother, who was somewhere else in the department store. While we were waiting, a man walked toward us. And then he leaned down to me, again, five years old or so, and he asked me, would you like a lollipop? And then he reached up onto the counter where there was this jar filled with lollipops and he handed one to me. I was frightened. First of all, he was a stranger and I had been taught well not to talk to strangers, let alone take candy from a stranger. And secondly, I thought he was a thief stealing a lollipop and then giving it to me. Now, I love lollipops, especially the kind they had at England Brothers. They had all kinds of flavors. But I shook my head and I said, no, thank you. At that, the man saw that I was uncomfortable. He smiled at my grandmother standing next to me and he asked, do you know who I am? I shook my head, no. He said, I'm Mr. England of England Brothers. This is my store. He was walking and talking to people in his own store, dressed like one of us, like an ordinary shopper, offering me a gift he knew I'd enjoy from his store. But because I didn't recognize him, I didn't take the gift. God is in the world, walking and talking among the people that God created. And yet, because we don't recognize him, we don't accept the gift. Now, I'm not advocating taking candy from strangers, but what I am suggesting he said, we don't need to struggle against our own monsters in the dark alone. God came close. The word made flesh. God with skin. Yesterday, I watched some of the funeral service for Archbishop Desmond Tutu. The preacher mentioned an African concept that Tutu talked a lot about, Ubuntu. 
Ubuntu is the idea that a person is a person through other persons. In short, we become God with skin for the sake of others. What Tutu said is that in his culture, when a person is said to have Ubuntu, it means that that person examines their thoughts and actions, not only for what they achieve for themselves, but for how they impact others. Tutu said that the practice of Ubuntu may be one of Africa's greatest gifts to the world. To be called a person with Ubuntu was the greatest praise one could receive. I think most of us would agree that Tutu was filled with Ubuntu. As we come into this new year, may we practice Ubuntu. God made flesh for the sake of the world. God did not choose to come to earth as an angel with wings, but as a person, just like you and me, a person with skin. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we sing our hymn of the day, Lo, How a Rose Air Beginning.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name, we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process, especially those in foster care. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all in need, especially Andrew, Lane and Drew, the Rohr family, the Braylon family, the Van Risen family, Sally, Sarah, Tim, Phil, James, Art, Rachel, Nancy, and Mary. Bring comfort to those for whom Separation, grief, or loss makes this season especially difficult. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love, made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we come to the offering, and we are reminded we are blessed to be a blessing. As we share our offering gifts, either online or prepare our own checks and, uh, to be mailed, let us listen to our offering music.
Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all the earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word born of Mary, to shine in our darkness, and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as I as you drink of it for remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your spirit bless us and this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come. See what God has made known for you. Hear these words that the body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. As you share the sacrament around your own tables, let us listen to the communion music, What Child Is This? Child of the Poor.
Helpless and hungry, lonely, afraid, wrapped in the chill of midwinter, comes now among us, born into poverty's embrace, new life for the world. Who is this who lives with our only? Sharing their sorrows, knowing their hunger. This is Christ revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, a child of the poor. Child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. Christian fear for sinners. 
Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes, we have seen your salvation. And in this meal, we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and give you grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God. Our postlude is Dorian Dance with our Back Bay Ringers and Friends.
Um, a couple of announcements that I have. We are, as a confirmation class, hoping that to get help from as many people as possible, we're providing lunches next Sunday to folks at Common Cathedral, which is the outdoor worshiping community um, made up of those who are homeless and as well as others that are not homeless, um, the, meeting outside on Boston Common every single Sunday. Uh, and so our confirmation class is providing the lunch um, Depending on how things are COVID-wise, we hope to stay outdoors for the service with the folks as well. Uh, so there is a sign-up sheet that was sent out through an email last week. If you need that, let me know. Um, but we're hoping to get people to help make sandwiches as well as provide snacks for that. Uh, are there other announcements that I've missed today? If not, thank you for joining with us today. Stay on and we'll have a time of coffee hour before the next service begins. Thanks, you know, Abby and Ingrid and Bill, like we had to redo the whole service <laughs> with very little notice. And so thank you for all of them. I was away on vacation. So thank you for them for help making that happen.